Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. So now we've spent a, a few days in the book of Leviticus talking about cleanliness, talking about things that would cause a person to become unclean and what they can do to become clean again. And we've talked about many different subjects. We've talked about food and the various animals, uh, the ones that were clean and those that were not clean. We talked about a woman giving childbirth and the uncleanness that came from that and how she could uh, purif purify herself from that. And we also looked at uh, the, the uh, skin diseases and leprosy and how a person or how to determine if a person had a particular skin disease and what to do in connection to pronouncing them unclean and how they get clean again. We've even talked about uh, mildew in a house uh, and how to determine if it is something that is to be considered unclean or how, uh, and if it is unclean, how it might become purified. We also talked about uh, the various uh, discharges from the human body. Uh, we talked, we uh, read about that today in chapter 15 of Leviticus and uh, some of the, the gross things that uh, come out of the human body, but that also cause a person to be unclean and anyone else who touches them to be unclean or anyone who touches anything that touches them to be unclean. And so a lot of teaching about uncleanness and, and how to purify things and things along those lines. But then we get to Mark chapter 7 and Jesus kind of blows our mind when it comes to this topic because we've had it impressed on our minds for several days now about how things on the outside, things on the body, can cause uh, other things to become impure and unclean. But Jesus is going to take it a step further. And he's going to say, that's not really, truly what causes a person to become unclean. Because there's something even more unclean than a discharge of the body or uh a, a flow of blood in a woman or leprosy or anything along those lines or something that's even more dirty and filthy than that and it's none other than the human heart jesus says this in mark 7 he says in verse 20 and he was saying that which proceeds out of the man that is what defiles the man for within out of the heart of men proceed the evil thoughts fornications thefts murders adulteries deeds of coveting and wickedness as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man. So here, Jesus is getting to the heart of the matter, uh, literally. Uh, yes, these commandments from the book of Leviticus were important. They were important in teaching the people the difference between what is clean and what is unclean, between what is holy and is what and what is not holy. It comes on the heels of... Uh, the incident with Nadab and Abihu, as we commented about before. And they needed that impressed on their minds. But they should have never stopped there. They should have recognized that uh, there are other matters to consider, and that is the matters of the heart. The, the outward things were important in order for them to be able to have God dwell among them. It was a way of impressing upon their minds uh, how important it was to keep themselves pure and clean uh, in the presence of God and that sort of thing. But Jesus is bringing them into a deeper reality, a deeper way of looking at things. And that is by uh, looking at the heart and saying, let's not just stop with outside things. As a matter of fact, they were so hung up on the outside things, they, even, they were even adding commandments that weren't even there in connection to this, these purification laws and things like that. But all the while, while being so meticulous about being clean on the outside, they had uh, a lot of uncleanness on the inside. And in Matthew chapter 23, we read about uh, the hypocrisy of the scribes and Pharisees and, and how they were like uh, whitewashed tombs. On the outside, they, they appeared beautiful, but on the inside, they were full of dead men's bones, uh, that sort of thing. And so Jesus is directing, directing his disciples to understand that what, what really should be your focus is what goes on in your heart. And so that's what we can focus on today as we do our reading today. Um, we've seen uh, just how meticulous 
and how important uh, these purification and, and commandments about cleanliness were all about. And it ought to be that we are just as stringent and just as uh, particular and intentional about the purity of our heart as they were and, and would have been about the, the, the purity of their bodies. And to try to live today with a pure mind. Uh, it says, uh, remember Jesus said at the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And that's what the Lord is looking for. People with a pure heart. People who don't have a mixture within. That doesn't, that don't, uh, on the one hand, uh, offer up words of praise to God. And then on the other hand, live a life of selfishness and self-indulgence. Or, or harbor idols in their hearts. But purely and absolutely and sincerely love the Lord. And, and give their whole lives to the Lord in full devotion and giving him their full heart and not a mixed heart that's uh, mixed with love for the world, love for other things, love for self, but that purely and absolutely loves the Lord. And so let's think about purification. And as we close the section in Leviticus about uh, cleanliness and purification, let's let that sink in and, and what we've learned from that sink in and help us to consider the condition of our hearts. Have we allowed our hearts to become impure? Have we allowed our hearts to become uh, unclean? If so, we need to go to the Lord, pray that he would help us to uh, cleanse our minds and our hearts, to wash our minds with the water of the word, to allow ourselves to uh, fill what was once filthy and dirty with something clean and pure, and that is the Word of God. And to let the Word of God dwell in our hearts richly. And let that produce words of praise and adoration to God in prayer and, and in songs of worship. And, and these are ways that we can purify our hearts, keep them clean before Him. And so that we can uh, have a proper place for Him to dwell and live with us as we walk in communion with Him. So with that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. I hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.